Team WHIG TV viewers, good evening world. That's right, world, because the World Cup has come to an end. And folks, since the World Cup has come to an end, tonight we bring you the greatest midsummer holiday of them all. Not the 4th of July. That one's overrated and boring. That's right, folks. Christmas in July brought to you each and every year by the all-new sports show for now one year running. We might keep this going in the future. Thank you, Ed. Um, Folks, we got a big show ahead for you tonight. Uh, this is our, our return. We've been gone for a few months. You folks have not seen me on television. I know. Okay, that's enough of that. Thank you. Uh, I know that's been tough on everyone at home. But, folks, you have me back at least for one week before we kick off season three here at the Elmer Sports Show. It is feverishly. <coughs> okay, Ed, that, that's, that's kind of enough of that. Ed is feverishly typing up the script for season three. He is scripting each and every Friday night football game that you will see upcoming uh, off of his internship with FIFA over the summer. Uh, nice to see you back from Bern. All right. I'll give you an applause for that. But, folks, it is obviously Christmas in July. I mean, you look outside. The heat, the humidity, the hurricanes. Nothing makes me think more about jolly old St. Nick and my good friend Frosty here. So, folks, at this point, Ed, I've just got one question to ask you. Are you as excited for Christmas in July as I am? It's the only sports show Christmas in July special. People at home are already applauding, Edward. They don't need your prompts. Thank you. I was about to, mm. Hope that didn't cost much. Folks, I'm Wes Bradshaw. That's Edward Green. Hi, you everybody. may know us as Wes Bradshaw and Edward Green, host of the all-new sports show. Folks, we would like to welcome everyone to the uh, first thing. Where did we do this last year? No, we did, oh, uh, really we did a remember. Christmas We did a Christmas special this year. At the actual Christmas? At the actual Christmas. Okay, okay. Well, folks, this is the first Maybe annual. I can't. I, I don't make promises on this show anymore. The first maybe annual Christmas in July. Where what Ed and I are going to do is we're going to come to you right here in the middle of the summer. Which you know I take off because most stars of television shows take time off when uh, when the show's on the air when the season's over. Yes, you do. So that's why I don't come in. I, I like to uh, you know go to my uh, private island off of San Trope. Mm -hmm. uh, we take the uh, the Bradshaw family yacht out. Nice. I spend my time at South Fork, my palatial estate in Edgecombe County. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to coach the children and play some baseball. Oh, there you go. Which, thank God is now how, how did that go? How did that go? Anyway, moving on in right. the show. Uh, folks, we are going to give you this one special night here in July before season three of the all-new sports show kicks off August 3rd, where we debut our first of three football preseason shows. Uh, here in our Nash Edge Cup and Wilson County coverage area. We're really looking forward to that. We've been working hard at it already, uh, and we hope to uh, bring everyone a really great preview this year so you know what's going on before high school football season kicks off. Ed, yes. before we start, let's update the people once again in case they've forgotten somehow how they can get up with us. You have so many ways you can get up with us. First of all, you can go to Twitter, which is at All New Sports Show, twitter.com slash All New Sports Show. I want to give a quick shout out to some of our newest followers including uh, Chris Hughes, who is a former football coach, high school football insider for Carolina Preps. Our guy, Carol so, Preps, actually has been a uh, guest on the show before. Yes, he has. So welcome on to that. I uh, also want to give a shout-out to Lorraine, uh, who is following us. So congratulations on that. Uh, and CenturyLink Central NC, uh, based out of Faithful, North Carolina. They're trying to sign us, obviously. Yeah, they are. Uh, There's I another way to put it. They're trying to sign us, give us big lucrative deals to move to Faithful, uh, home of the NCHSAA's uh, Eastern Regional for many years. You guys now. are doing great. Neil say we're staying in Rocky Mount. Facebook.com slash all new sports show is another way you can get up with us. That's a really big place. Uh, a lot of our videos are there. If you want to know more about us, what kind of awards we've mm -hmm. won, uh, some more uh, information about our writers mm -hmm. that we have. That will be coming up in the next few weeks here. Some good stuff to talk about there as we're also going to talk about later in the show. That's right. New intro there. So if you want to get up with us, again, that's Facebook.com slash all new sports show. If you want to email us, the address is all new sports show at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. If you want to send us your letters, send your parcels, please don't send us live animals. But you can send those to this part of Rocky Mount, 1701 Sunset Avenue, Suite 201. 
one Rocky Mount, North Carolina, 27804. Finally, uh, we also want to promote our podcast. That's right. The all new sports show, Colon the Podcast. Uh, if you'd like to hear our Not your colon, like in no, your like colon, the, just like the, uh, dot, the dot. as my um, English teacher from the fifth grade would call it, those two dot thingies. Mm -hmm. so it's like a semicolon, but with more oomph. Um, if you want to get on that, you can go on to podbean.com, search All New Sports mm -hmm. Show. We're also on iTunes. Uh, you right. can listen to us on there, All New Sports Show on I'll, there as well. I'll pick us up on Podcast Republic. There you go. Just to listen to myself and critique Ed the next day. I do. I, I, I listen to myself to critique myself, too. Mm -hmm. And usually I'm not very impressed. I so have those no are, to do. Mm, those are all the ways you can get up with us. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys. That's right, folks. So definitely drop us a line. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. I'd rather you didn't. But I'd rather you not tell us that you hate us, but hey. Be honest. My, my yeah. therapist says sometimes rejection is an important part of my life. Thank you. It's mm -hmm. been a rough summer with baseball. Mm. Anyway, and speaking of baseball, folks, we are here to wrap up the summer of baseball. Yes. Uh, Ed, the biggest baseball playing in our area. Mm -hmm is uh, usually done by Coleman Pitt, American Legion Post 58. Mm -hmm. uh, and this summer, the All New Sports Show has been on hand quite a few times to catch some of those ball games. Yes, they have. I've been fortunate enough to, along with Tony Dowdy, see three of our Post 58 games this mm -hmm. year. Uh, two were 10 run affairs uh, in both the seventh and eighth inning. Um, and then the final one was a thrilling, thrilling game against Garner uh, in the first round of the uh, Legion playoffs. Mm -hmm. And um, which ended on maybe one of the craziest plays I've ever seen. <laughs> to put it mildly, uh, a runner for post 58 uh, attempting to score from second on a wild pitch ball four with the bases loaded and the winning run actually going to first base on that walk. Mm. Um, this, this was an inning in the ninth inning with heavy rain. This was when Hurricane Arthur was actually coming through on a Friday night. Ushering in the Christmas season? Yes, he was. With with rain, dreary, dreary rain reminded me of Liverpool on uh, just about any day, to be precise. Today, um, it's okay. Um, but he, c you know, the pitchers for Garner really couldn't throw very well. Uh, a lot of balls. The post fifty eight went to the bottom of the ninth, down thirteen to seven. Had gotten all the way back, and then, then with the tying run going to second base, you uh, you get thrown out at home, trying trying to score from second on a wild pitch. Happened. Yeah, not for not as often as you think. Well, I mean, that's just my natural response to things I don't understand mm. why they happen. Uh, but speaking of post fifty eight, their season coming to an end just this week. Mm. They actually made it into the area one uh, West semifinals. Yes, they did. They came Raleigh back post with one. two again, two wins against Garner in that best of three series. Right. But unfortunately, they did lose uh, in five or sorry four to uh, post mm -hmm. one, uh, the best team I think from Raleigh. And uh, one of the more interesting side plots mm -hmm. of this, this whole season in the playoffs for mm -hmm. Post 58, they played every game at home because Garner and Post 1 Raleigh, <laughs> neither one actually had a home field. So every game was played right here in Rocky Mounts Legion Field. Very, very interesting when you never have to travel and you're, uh, you're the four seed coming out of your division. Hey, that is... Um I don't think Hank Jones and the uh, Post 58 guys really complained about that any. No. Uh, you know, saved a little money on the van. Mm -hmm. um, didn't quite have the travel expenses of the past. And, uh, but overall, I would say a, a solid, solid year for the Legion. I think they just lacked a little bit in the pitching. Mm -hmm. I just, I, and I, I think I especially bit them when it came time to, uh, to play in the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, we, saw, we saw their lack of pitching, and they had to basically – outscore Garner to try and go through, and then mm -hmm. which they ended up doing, and then it's come again to bite them against post one. They actually had a chance before playing in that round to actually win the division with a doubleheader against post one on the Saturday right. before uh, and ended up losing both. So unfortunately, we're not able to go through because of that. <sighs> uh, also, um, coach for post 58, was not uh, not Hank Jones. Yes, Hank Jones was there. Not as there much. His daughters were playing softball. He mm -hmm. wanted to be more for them uh, with that. So Collins Cuthrell, a player from who had actually played with the Wilson Tobbs mm -hmm. the past couple of years out of Barton. Barton College, that's right. Yes. Uh, so he's a local guy. He came in here and I thought did a very good job with what mm -hmm. he had. Um, just unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be for post 58 this year. Uh, I, I, this is going to bring us to our first big topic of the night. 
it seems like there's a bit of a dearth in great talent right now in our mm -hmm. area, and I will also extend that to Wilson, who I believe post-11 mm -hmm. is actually still playing in the, in the Legion playoffs right now. They, they might actually be playing right now, not to date this show. But it's... It's a while, so there's no game. That's true. That's a good point. Well, for the replay tomorrow. Ah, uh, yes, um, the replay. Uh, that's right out of them all. <laughs> yes. Uh, the DVR numbers are very good. Um, the question, though, I have is, it, it seems like there's been a, a bit of a talent drain from our area as well. And it seems like baseball isn't, isn't as fiercely loved as it has been in past generations. Um, one thing I would, I would point out, just as media covering it, mm -hmm. Um, we get started, and we're going to get started here next month in August. Mm -hmm. We start high school football. That's right. Then that basically, we've been blessed uh, the last couple of years. We've been doing it mm -hmm. with a team going to the state finals just about every year. The last year, we still went to the state semis. Mm -hmm. So we're covering high school football till beginning mid-December. Mm -hmm. Then we translate transition right into basketball. There you go. And we've been blessed the last three years to go to the state championship for basketball. Mm -hmm. Rocky Mount, Rocky Mount Prep, and then this year with Hunt. That's right. By the time we're done with those two, it's near the end of March. Mm -hmm. There's only about a month and a half left of baseball. Yeah. And that's that's one thing I think in baseball, I don't think it's anybody's fault, but it does kind of just where it falls on the schedule of high school sports, it gets sort of pushed towards the end and sort of pushed out. Well, and there are a lot of things with baseball that go into baseball. I know you're very opinionated about this. I, I am, um, and it's because yeah, I'm, I'm involved in the youth levels. Yes, at I'm involved thoughts, in the yes. youth level. Um, nine, ten-year-olds mm -hmm. are my forte at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the thing is, when you say it seems like the passion's gone out of Rocky Mountain a little bit for baseball, look at your youth teams. Mm -hmm. Your nine and tens in Rocky Mountain, your 11 and 12s in Rocky Mountain, they're as good as ever. It's great baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really well put together teams, very well coached teams, you know, talented kids at that age group for whatever reason it's um it, it's not translating at the moment and right. at times these things are it's cyclical, cyclical. Yeah. it's very cyclical in this area you know I, I believe right now those of us who've been around for a while we're still spoiled from that mid-2000s run where you know mm -hmm. northern nash goes to the eastern finals rocky mount wins the state title northern nash goes back to the eastern finals yeah. you pick up with hunt and hunt suddenly is you know really good fight has won a state championship in the last uh 15 20 years mm -hmm. um you know there are good baseball teams there have been good baseball teams there was a run though for about a three four year cycle where you've got three guys who um were drafted, well, actually, now let's take it up to five if you had Hobbs Johnson and mm -hmm. uh, now Benton Moss. Yep. You've had five guys out of that group that were drafted. You know, Xavier Macklin, uh, Brian Goodwin, of course, mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Joyner, uh, Moss, mm -hmm. and, and Hobbs Johnson. Yep. That's five guys who got gotten drafted. Oh, this is crazy. That, you know, really, when you look at the numbers, that hasn't happened around here for a long mm -hmm. time. Before then, I mean, you go back, um, Maurice Cobb was a uh, 20th round draft pick out of Rocky Mount. Back in the early 2000s, and he was he was taken really as a project player. He was a really good athlete. I never call Maurice a great baseball <laughs> player. Really good athlete. Before that, I mean, really the last guy you go back to that got drafted, I believe, was Jeremy Ward, and that was after out of college. And Jeremy was a great player. Those are some really good Rocky Mount teams. But I, I and folks, I may be totally wrong. I'm just going on my knowledge and what I remember going on around these parts because you know I've been here since. You've been here a lot longer than I have. Yeah, I mean, I've been here a while, and just from my knowledge, and, you know, of course, I talked a lot to Charles Austin. Charles Austin, <laughs> back in his day, yeah. could tell you everything. You know, the baseball guys around here. But when you basically take five guys out of a group that was within three or four years with each other, five guys go in the major league draft, I believe that's unheard of in this area. Yeah. And, folks, if I'm wrong, please, and some of you guys who've been around longer than me, if I'm wrong, uh, send us an email, send us a tweet, send us a Facebook, mm -hmm. something. But, you know, then you go from that group and you've still got, hey, Collins Cuthrell was, um, was a really good player at Barton. Mm -hmm. Obviously, right now, we look at Thomas Berry's having a great career oh, down at Lander. Fantastic. You know, there, there are still guys. But I don't really know if we say we're in a true dearth of talent mm -hmm. or if we just went through a group that was so good, That's a good point. that suddenly our expectations have just gone sky high. And, Ed, now you're, you're a Greenville guy. Yes, I am. Well, you know, let, let's talk about the local juggernaut in Greenville, which is J.H. Rose. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, J.H. Rose went through a real downswing the last <laughs> few years, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. I mean, uh, now, and actually last season, the 2013 
season, they did not make the playoffs. No, they did not. They Ooh, came back last time, J.H. Rose yeah. did not make the playoffs. Yeah. And then they came out this year. You know, I mean, it, it's just somewhat of a downswing at Rose. Mm -hmm. You know, D.H. Colley's won some titles. South Central always solid. There was a little downswing. I just... Um, I also, I believe here in the Rocky in the Rocky Mount area, especially, your options are opening up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not to push down Rocky Mount Academy baseball in the mm -hmm. past by any means, but five years ago, Rocky Mount Academy baseball wasn't exactly a destination. No, it's true. Um, it, it was it was more it was an alternative, but it wasn't an it wasn't a great alternative. Suddenly now, Pat Smith going there. Mm -hmm. Pat Smith has made that oh, a really good great. alternative for players. So he. he Rocky Mountain Academy and also Faith Christian to a degree have been funneling away some of your um, talented mm -hmm. kids that would really make your public school mm -hmm. teams better. And that just overall has weakened your public schools. But then there you have to also think about, we're not, it's not just public schools, it's also the Legion programs. And, right. and that, you were telling me earlier as we were talking off camera, mm -hmm. as we are wont to do on occasion, and not just on the podcast, but it's, it's also something that you and I are both not the biggest fans of in the world, and that's travel ball and what they, what they do that's in right. the summer and, and how it takes them away for Legion teams. It's not even maybe Derek Carter. We were talking about him. Derek Carter's arguably the best player in our area. Yeah. You know, he is a fantastic pitcher for Northern Ash. Mm -hmm. He still has a, at least, you know, a year left. That's right. Well, he's a junior this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to be. Oh, he's he might be a senior rising. I think he's a rising senior Yeah. Now. So he's got, he's got another year left in him before he goes off to whatever college. Love the Northern Ash team. Yeah. Should be. That North Ash team's going to be great. Should be a little North Ash team. Um, but that's something I think that's hurting as well, is this the promises of travel ball, and that's mm -hmm. that's something you were really talking about earlier off camera. That's right. And don't get me wrong, I've seen the pluses of travel ball. Mm -hmm. You know, guys like uh, Brian Goodwin, Xavier Macklin, you know, Tyler Joyner, Hobbs Johnson, Bitten Moss. It helped those guys elevate their status. I think travel ball can be really good to be found. Mm hmm but, you know, there are other other things to be found. You know, showcase events, obviously. Right. Team camps. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Carolina baseball camp. State mm -hmm. baseball camp. East Carolina baseball camp. And these are places you go. It's not just those coaches. No, there. It, when, they coaches. when they hold the, uh, the player events, mm -hmm. I mean, there's coaches from all over the place mm -hmm. there. And all it takes for baseball, and Britt Johnson says, all it takes is one guy to look at you and mm -hmm. love you. I mean, it's, it's not like you're sitting here having to bid against everyone else. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one guy to love you. Yeah. Find something they like about you. Um, travel ball, and what a lot of people don't recognize with baseball, it's not football. No. It's not basketball. Not even close. Those scholarships that you're picking up, mm -hmm. they're not full rides. You're lucky if you get 10 or 15% out of it. Mm -hmm. um, truly, when you look at the economics of travel ball, if, if your kid plays three years of travel ball and you play year-round travel ball, you're traveling, you're going to Georgia, you're going to South Carolina, you're going to Virginia, you're going to Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, how much gas are you putting in the car? How many hotel nights are you spending? How much food are you having to pay for? Then how much are you having to put down for your kid to pay, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, pay to play? You know, all these expenses, they add up. At the end of the day, <laughs> if you take a look at what first semester tuition for, um, for Johnny's college might have been, how much did travel ball really <laughs> help you out even with the scholarship? Yeah. Uh, and that's not to say that travel ball, obviously. I mean, hey, the great thing about travel ball, most of the time, I'm not going to say this about all of them because there are some run-of-the-mill travel ball groups mm -hmm. out there. But, you know, if you play dart bags, Carolina Cubs, mm -hmm. something like that, uh, Evo Shield, Canes, you're playing oh, high-level competition, top, yeah. and that's great. Mm -hmm. That's the best part of it. You are playing the high-level competition. But on, on a local level, and Tony Dowdy is a huge proponent of Legion Baseball. Mm -hmm. And I think we differ a little bit how we look at it. Uh, you know, the, the way Tony feels, I'm not trying to shoot on Tony here at all. I, hey, we give Tony open for him to come yes. and yeah. say whatever he wants as well. Um, Tony is of the opinion that you can stay and, you know, play your, all your local stuff. And if you're good enough, you'll get seen. I don't totally believe that because nowadays, and coaches like Britt Johnson will tell us, Gone so much are the days when, as a coach, you're going to a high school game or to a Legion game to see a kid. Right. That doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. There's not enough time. Your recruiting base is too large. Um, there's so much of many other things going on. That That is a one in a million chance at this point. Kid, the kids, the top kids who plan on playing college baseball, they do need the exposure. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. They need the exposure to be seen. But I also feel once you've been seen, 
And once they've seen what you can do, and especially once you've decided on your college future, mm -hmm. why are you going to keep paying to play travel ball? Come back, give back to the community, give back to your Legion program, give back to your Babe Ruth program, how, whatever you are able to play, you know, come back and play it. Because you'll talk to a lot of these guys who, a lot of the big time guys who, um, you know, they played the travel ball and they did all this. But then after they had signed, after everything fell in place for them, they came back maybe their senior year and like, well, I got nothing else to do. I'll play Legion ball. And they absolutely have the time of their lives because they're playing with their buddies, the guys they've grown up with playing with, the guys they've grown up with playing against. And you're coming together, and it is basically you're an all-star team. Mm -hmm. And you told me about how much fun it was to watch the, that Brian Goodwin team. Oh. With I mean, this was before, obviously they changed the bats. That's right. And just <laughs> and well, just, and it was it wasn't even yeah. Brian Goodwin. That was yeah. more was, Xavier Macklin, yeah, Ben Fish, Colin yeah, it was all those we guys. talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. The group from Northern Nashville was so good. Before they changed the bats, these guys played. Um, they play all their games one summer at, at Northern Nashville's field, which um, has never really been mistaken for. No. A deep field not anyway. <laughs> not, not it's spacious. not a spacious no. field. It's not a pitcher's park. We'll no, call it that. Not even close. And um, if my memory serves me right, uh, Xavier Macklin literally came in for the last two games of the regular season. He had been playing for uh, I think he played for the Tobs or maybe the Asheville Copperheads mm -hmm. for 15 games. Came in the last game or two of the regular season, and through the end of the regular season, through their playoff run, hit 20 home runs. <laughs> and um, Myself and gentlemen who used to film for us, Peyton Myrick, we used to go to those games, do the games, and we would always have to cut two or three or four <laughs> innings out and edit because yeah. the games were going four hours yeah. uh, because they were hitting the ball so well. And those guys, they had an amazing, amazing time that summer. I remember that well. I was in the dugout for a lot of those games filming. So for me, that one was close, near and dear to my heart. And, you know, it's, it's just it's something to be able to play one more, one more round uh -huh. with the guys you grew up oh, playing yeah. with. Um, and that, that's kind of that's my spiel for Legion Ball. That's why I love Legion Ball. Um, you know, when I was growing up around here, uh, you know, I, I was coming I was coming through a system where I, I could have ended up in a few places, a few different places. But you know, even coming up, I mean, I dreamed of playing. We dreamed of playing for post fifty eight. Yeah. We went to the post fifty eight games during the summer when we were 12, 13, 14 years old. Oh, yeah. That's where we went because that's where we wanted to be. I never made it there. I wasn't that good. I wasn't that good baseball player. I just take that much. I loved it. I just wasn't that good. Um, but, I mean, that's what we dream. I mean, we have our post-58 T-shirts that we buy, and that's, that's what it was all about was because you knew you were giving back to your community, and you knew the community would come out mm -hmm. and support you. And that's something I'd also like to see is more community support for it. Crap, but also, well, well, but I also think if you bring in the top players, yeah, that's, the that's community right. does get behind a little more because suddenly, hey, well, these are the guys I heard about all spring. Yeah. And now they're all together. Man, this could be fun to watch. I think another great thing about, you know, we, we talk about going to the school camps. Mm -hmm. Just about every school camp, you're going to end up playing some scrimmage games. That's right. And generally, you're going to be playing with a group of guys you've probably never met before. That's right. And I think that's one thing college co coaches really look at is, uh, is when they bring you in, mm -hmm. you're probably, most likely, you know, unless you're playing at a very odd situation, <laughs> you're going to be playing with probably 29 other guys you've mm -hmm. never met before until you get there. And I think that's what college coaches look like. How, how well do these guys adapt? Mm -hmm. Like, we know they're good talents. How well do they at, interact with these guys they've never met before, just mm -hmm. meeting here now at the camp? How well do they get along? How's their attitude? Mm -hmm. And, and, and how, how do they handle the mental aspects of these games? And that's, that's what it is, because a lot of these coaches, they, they have an idea mm -hmm. of how good these players are. There might be a diamond in the rough that pops up. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they have, a, they have some sort of an idea. That's right. Here's, here's where they get you out of your comfort zone, right. away from your high school team, the play, all the people you know. Mm -hmm. And now, hey, go interact with these other you know, 14, 15 guys on your team mm -hmm. and go play baseball. And that's, I think, an, uh, something that doesn't get brought up a whole lot, but it's something that a lot of coaches really like to see is exactly. how do you handle basically getting thrown in the deep pool. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, my thing with travel ball, travel back to travel ball, I believe travel ball has a place. Yes. Um, yes. I believe especially in the younger groups, mm -hmm. um, it separates kids who are serious mm -hmm. about playing baseball. Because I'm going to tell you, folks, what I do in Pine Tops, our spring season is it's, it's babysitting. <laughs> I mean, that's how it is, you know. I, I, I mean, I, I, sent, I sent five kids off of my team in the spring mm -hmm. to our all-star team in Pine Tops. Um, that means I had six, seven other kids who either, truth, weren't good enough for all-stars or, you know, didn't care to play all-stars. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was, you know, hey, we're having fun. It's a good mm -hmm. thing to do, da-da-da-da. That's great. You know, now my five kids I sent to all-stars, once we got two all-stars, 
tempo changed. Mm -hmm. Things of changed. Course. No more was it, all right, guys, you know, we're just going to goof off and have some fun today and, you know, try to hope y'all don't kill each other for two hours of practice. No, suddenly practice has really meant something because you had 12, 13, 14 kids who were out there to play. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you can equate to travel ball is, you know, mom and dad are putting out money for you to play. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it, they're not putting out, you know, the kind of money they're laying down. They're not doing that. You know, so you can be babysat for two hours. Mm -hmm. So kids can, they can babysit your kids for two hours. They're putting down money for real because, hey, little Jimmy likes to play. Yeah. And little Jimmy wants to get better. That's what you're doing when you go to travel ball. I believe it does have a, uh, it, it, it provides a positive outlet mm -hmm. to play the game. Um, you know, if you, if you really want to get down to, you know, there are shady coaches. There are guys who I wouldn't that's, trust. That's you know, true with AAU basketball. I, yeah, exactly. I mean, there were guys. I was, there are guys in travel ball. I wouldn't trust to coach my five-year-old t-ball kids. <laughs> you know, much less my you know eleven or twelve-year-old who actually has some talent. But it does have a place for it. I just feel when you get a little older, it's time to get back a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my feelings on it. Oh, and I understand. That's that's kind of what we're doing here. Is we're we're giving back. To we're people. giving back. That's right. But uh, so again, we're not we're not down on travel ball. We just. No. We Not just totally. think, you know, just has its place. Have a have a have a have balance. an open mind. Have I mean, I, I want to see an open mind, and yes, a balance to it. Um, that's why I really want to see. And you talked about playing, you know, seventy games a summer. I don't care who you are. That that's just cause for burnout. Yeah. You know, if you're playing that many games, you, you're already playing at least twenty to thirty for your your high school team. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, so you're playing a hundred games over a summer. You might not play that if you're in college. And by summer, of course, we mean October. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, and I do understand specialization. Mm -hmm. You know, gone is the day of the great three-sport athlete. Yeah. At this point, they tell you you've got to choose one to do. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you've got to choose one. Mm -hmm. I understand that. So you are losing some football, basketball kids to it. But it's what it is. That's, uh, that's just my opinion. You know, you know what we might also be losing some kids to in the future? As, as pay to play becomes more prevalent. The new, the new sport football. of the future? The new football. No longer since 1972. I believe the future is finally now. You think the future's here? All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Yep. Here's what we're going to do. Please. We're going to take our commercial break for the night. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, Lee is going to play a, uh, a special mm -hmm. World Cup graphic for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, folks, we're going to break down the 2014 FIFA World Cup, which came to an end today in Brazil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, okay, we don't have. I actually have anymore. the entire uh, script straight from FIFA right here, script. and we'll we'll tell you what shocking twist was actually missed at the end. There you go. There was a twist that mm. missed at the end, and um, there, there was a big time rewrite. Yeah. I'm not sure uh, the director, Mr. Bladder, was happy about that, <laughs> but we'll just have to see what happens. But we're gonna do that all right here in a moment after we take this commercial break on the all new sports show brought to you each and every week by Roger G. Taylor Associates here on WHIG TV. place is perfect, or at least it will be, with a little help from Dex. In the book or at DexKnows.com, Dex can help you get results fast and deliver the best local advice so you can get it done right, right here, right now. We should do this more often. Dex, results for the here and now. Good day, Eastern Carolina. It's Mike Keffer at Mike Keffer Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram on the 301 bypass between Rocky Mountain and Wilson. How do you roll? The summer clearance event is here on all new Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Motor Trend Truck of the Year Ram Truck. The redesigned Chrysler 200, Eco Diesel Grand Cherokee, and a whole lineup of world class products in stock right here in Rocky Mount. They're still American, they just dress the interiors in fine Italian suits. Call 855 by Keffer or shop online 24 7 at MikeKeffer.com.
Hi. And we welcome everyone back on the all-new sports show brought to each and every week by Roger G. Taylor & Associates. Don't forget, folks, you can get us on social media, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, mm -hmm. um, that email thing that I keep hearing all this uh, mm -hmm. wild stuff about. Also, you can still send us some good old snail mail as long as it's not living, right? Yeah, send, uh, send your, uh, uh, your non-living animals. Also, don't go to your house. That doesn't mean send us a dead squirrel in a box, okay? Yeah. You don't need to send, say that right. Don't send animals. Just don't send any animals. Send animals. Don't send kitties. All right. Well, Ed, yeah. it's over. Which means we only have three weeks until the Barclays Premier uh. League starts. It's time for an extended 60 seconds of World Cup soccer. How did the snowflakes survive the ball of fire? Oh, they're magic snowflakes. I like they're the ones from Frozen. Let Ar Arjun Robin oh. flying through the air there, right into the right into the face of Boy. Oh, hopefully, hopefully, but not soon to be deposed English football manager. All right, folks, it is over. The World Company Cup, Cup, oh. Cup of Cups of all cups. Copa das Copas came to an end. I believe. What are we looking at time-wise? Let's say about three hours ago. Yeah, three hours ago. Yeah, yeah, it was just about three hours ago since uh, Super Mario scored. That's right. So that's right. Since uh, hopefully future Liverpool target Mario Gutza. Gutza. Uh, scored Not to Gutze. win it for our new German overlords. Uh, congratulations, uh, Prime Minister Merkel. Yeah. I am ready to follow your every directive from here on out, no matter who I have to start with. She almost cracked a smile when Gutza scored. Almost. Almost. But in the proper German fashion, that smile stayed up. It stayed push inside. It down, push it down. Stay push it inside. Down. All right, folks. It it is over. Like we said, in oh, four man. weeks. Thank God it'll be back as uh, the Barclays Premier League begins August sixteenth, I believe. Uh, um, it's close. Yeah, close actually, I think that. you're right. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty mirror slav. Close. Close. Uh, close. Uh, that. <laughs> yeah, sixteenth. 10 a.m. So there. 10 a.m. I can't wait. Mm. But, folks, we are going to talk about it now. We were hoping to be joined tonight by uh, Uber American outlaw mm -hmm. Nick Petrovich. <laughs> But uh, he is still crying in his uh, Von Wolfhausen uh, beer from uh, the finest film ever made, Beer Fest. Uh, he is still crying into it because uh, his beloved USNA did not yeah. make the finals. Folks, as you see behind us, the and please explain um, the graphics. Who are these people? Up. Who are these people? Uh, the, the old, the uh, old grandfatherly gentleman just over my shoulder. That is Roy, as we like to call him, the great Roy Hodgson, yeah. who uh, took a group of English superstars and got one. And you can't see it. You could actually see it when we were on the uh, when it was on when it was full screen. One this is actually a glorious picture of him. When there it is, one uh, freaking. You see point. in the bottom right corner that that was actually his time at West Brom Albion. One freaking point. He's not bothered. Um, you can also see Aaron Robin, uh, the Dutch player, kind of sort of flowing across the screen there. He's going left. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's got that dodgy flapper. Don't get oh, sucked in the board. Oh, it's glorious. Um, noted for diving and not being punished by uh, FIFA. Uh, the Shiba Inu uh, that you can see representing Japan. There are dogs of the World Cup, and that is Japan's dog, the Shiba Inu. Uh, you can also see there, just for a second, uh, falling down is uh, our tribute, actually, to Nick Petrovich. The Wolverhampton Wanderers uh, logo. They're going up. Uh, they're going up. Back to the championship. So um, just a lot of fun out there. That is our graphic. And uh, That's our graphic. <sighs> Woo, that's our graphic. All right, Ed. Mm. Now, folks, that's if um, if you have been a loyal listener to the All New Sports Show, colon, the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, every week you're picking up our, our thoughts as this cup has gone along. But for you, there's some of you folks out there, you know, you haven't maybe latched on to the podcast yet. Maybe you just didn't know enough about the podcast. Mm -hmm. Now you do, and yeah. obviously you'll begin listening every week. Uh, but let's and let's kind of give a quick overview from the group stages. Sure. Um, let's. let's start with England, and that's it because that's England. <laughs> that, that was that was England, the that the secondary it. group of death. England. That's right. Wes is predicted semi-finalist in the entire yeah. tournament. Yeah. We scored, as I said, one freaking point. Mm -hmm. Against Costa Rica, a team who didn't care anymore because they were already through. You know. Should be noted if you are new time, uh, new 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 to the game of soccer. Uh, when he says point, it doesn't actually mean they scored a goal. 
That is about what we scored. They did score game. one. Actually, they scored two in the entire tournament. Mm. The point he's referring to is drawing uh, Costa Rica in their last match, which didn't even matter because at that point they were already eliminated from the tournament. So this was the group of death, and of course, England looked at the group of death, and what do you say to the group of death except not in the face? Um, except, oh man, we got this. Except yeah. then uh, the grandfatherly gentleman over my shoulder was once again the head coach, and uh, that spelled doom from the beginning. Unfortunately. Let's start at Group A. Though. We'll go to Group A. Let's go to group uh, a. We're just going to skim through this. Brazil, Mexico, Croatia, Cameroon, Brazil, and Mexico went through. Uh, Brazil, of course, a lot of crying, a lot of tears, which happily the Argentinians were able to share in today. Um, it's not quite as bad. No, not as bad. Uh, Brazil, an interesting group stage. Uh, big wins over Croatia and Cameroon, and then a scoreless draw over Mexico, which gave us the great goalkeeper, Axel Choa of and Mexico, and gave us Wet Herrera. Wet Herrera. Thank you for Wet Herrera. Thank FIFA, you, Wet Herrera. FIFA really knew what they were doing when they brought in little-known Miguel Herrera into. Uh, he was a great uh, casting great. decision by Seb Blatter. Oh, Wet Herrera, Dry Herrera, uh, Irish pub tackling Herrera. All Herreras. All Herreras are great. You All saw them in the intro today's show. That's right. Um, it was a lot of fun. Herrera for England. Oh, not, not yet. Not yet. Four not years. May, it won't have to be until 2018. Um, in Group B, we had Netherlands, Chile, uh, previous World Cup winners, Spain, and That's Australia. Right. Up until today, the world champions yeah. of the world. And now the king is dead. Long live the king. Um, the Dutch went All through right, with nine points. The played, huh? No, it, it's beyond cold play. It's cold uh, Chile finished second in that group. Spain. <sighs> Can we talk a little bit about the death of Tiki Taka? I just I don't see it as the death of Tiki Taka. I see it as the death of uh, a bunch of old Spanish guys. Yeah, probably. Which really sounds bad and a little genocidal, but <laughs> uh, you know I think uh, I, said, literally. I, said, I said on our podcast I thought they would go through. I thought they would go out early in the uh, knockout route rounds. Um, and someone, a, a friend of mine, asked me, he said, uh, he said, let me pick your vast knowledge of soccer. Yes. He said, since I don't watch it at all except every four years. He said, what happened to Spain? Basically, the fact with Spain, they tried to take one more ride mm -hmm. out of the group that had won them the last three major world tournaments. Yes. Back-to-back -back Euros mm -hmm. and the World Cup 2010. I had no problem with them taking that group and going. Can we take one real quick second? Go right ahead. Euros are the, for those of you new to the game, great game, That's the right. European Championship, it's kind of like the World Cup, but only for teams in Europe. <laughs> exactly. It is much, much, much more uh, snobbish. Yeah. Because us Europeans, we uh, we feel that we are better than us. everyone. Improved today. Go England. Continue with Spain. Uh, the Spanish took uh, a group mainly consisting of the names like uh, Iniesta, Alonso. Uh, Casillas, Alonso, um, Xabi, um, apparently someone named Fernando Torres, Leading goal uh, scorer. Leading goal scorer, of course he was. Uh, they basically took this group that had been the crux of the last, right, really, you know, you look at the last eight years um, of winning these big tournaments. They took them one more time. Didn't Just work. Just too old, didn't have enough didn't legs work. left. Um, a little heatish. A little yeah, yeah and, and I mean, really, the well, and heat also, the, the heat of Brazil. They yeah. withered in the heat of Brazil. Mm -hmm. They did. They did, and it was a crashing, a spectacularly crashing end of the Spanish dynasty. But don't cry for Spain, folks, because they left home enough talent yeah. to literally <laughs> fill two other World Cup teams that maybe could have made the knockout stages. Yeah. The Spanish will be back, uh, first of all, in France in 2016, and then uh, in uh, the great Russia. Soviet power of Russia mm -hmm. in 2018. Everybody invades Russia. Uh, in Group C, we had one of the two darlings of the tournament, I'd say, besides the United States, of course. Uh, yeah, Colombia. The world just loves the United States. They do. They actually kind of do now. Apparently, England loves the United States more than their own team now. It's not hard to do. <laughs> uh, Colombia came through. They won every match. They won every match with flair, choreographed dance moves. It was great. The world was introduced to Cuadrado, Quintero, and James Rodriguez. Maybe the, the, maybe the, the great next The man star. that someone at this table said would be the breakout star of the World guy. Cup. Was that guy? You did it. Uh, Colombia just ran rough shot through love their Monaco group. players. Um, also, surprisingly a bit, considering they only scored their two goals in the very last match against Ivory Coast, including mm. one at the death on a penalty. Uh, Greece go through. Uh, Ivory Coast and Japan did not. Um, Colombia are great. Want to take a quick second, though. Uh, we're talking about deaths. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire, probably the end of their golden generation, and Japan basically exemplifying a terrible, terrible,
tournament for all of Asia. Well, basically, there are two kinds of golden generations in this world. Yeah. There's the Spanish golden generation, yeah, which, one which wins the three major tournaments yeah. before flaming out. Yeah. And then there's Cote d'Ivoire slash the English golden generation, who for some reason are called the golden generation when they never do anything or accomplish anything of any worthiness. Do they even win any uh, African Cups? Cup, Cup, of Cup no. of Nations? So no. They always qualified, much like England, always qualified, never won anything. England, not quite as bad as Cote d'Ivoire. At least they made it to the knockout stages all the time in the World Cup. Except for this one. Well, the golden generation was That's gone true. this year. Excuse me. You know, Sorry. The, the greatness of uh, Beckham, um, Lampard, mm. my beloved Stevie G. Uh, Stevie G and Lampard, kind of the last Ashley flickering uh, moments of the golden generation. You know, you look at uh, Ashley Cole, the most hated man in England. John Terry, the oh. most hated um, philanderer right. in England. Um, you know, uh, Ratface from Manchester United, uh, Neville. Mm -hmm. Neville. You know, you look at those guys. They were the golden generation of England. Great job, guys. You made some quarterfinals mm -hmm. and lost on penalties all the time. So golden generations, take them early. Yeah. Uh, going on to Group D, uh, we talked about this. Costa Rica and Uruguay going through. Costa Rica representing CONCACAF Thunder. Uh, we can't actually play the song because of copyright issues. Well, uh, three former World Cup winners in that group. Uruguay, uh, yeah, Italy, Italy, of course, has won multiple. Goodbye, Pirlo. Goodbye, Pirlo. We love you. <sighs> God, you, you're so beautiful. God. You could be a Bond villain. Uh, I love or, you, Pirlo. Or Bond. He or just the Italian Bond. You know, with a haircut, he really could be Bond. Oh, yeah, haircut. Just basically change Bond for him. And, of course, uh, England, long list 66. Uh, three, cup win three former Cup winners. And Costa Rica comes out of the group. Cock and how many scores? How many points did England score? One freaking point. You're still not bitter. No, I'm not bitter at all. Uh, going into Group E, uh, France and Switzerland went through Ecuador and Honduras. Honduras, the only Concacaf Thunder team that uh, didn't really do very well. Uh, That's the a tough rest, group, though. Yeah, that was a pretty tough group. Um, France played a lot of inventive football on the stage. Uh, beat down on Switzerland, five two. It was actually five nil at one point. Thought it was going to be the biggest. Uh, Blow out of the tournament. <laughs> no, not even close. We were. Mm. Uh, France announcing their presence. Don't forget, they host Euro 2016 yes, they with a young group that's only going to get better. France is, uh, I believe, they're back to world power. Status. Is this is this where we can also mention then Pogba, Paul Pogba, mm -hmm. named the best young player at this World Cup. He's Officially, wonderful. He won he that. He's wonderful. A, uh, lately, a target of um, everybody, really. Real Madrid. Mm. Who basically there's Real Madrid, and then there's everybody yeah. after that. So. Real Madrid are the New York Yankees of, uh, of European football. They just throw money at people and hope something sticks to the wall. It won them a Copa del Rey, and it won them a Champions League, though. Which is more than we can say about the CC Sabathia less New York Yankees this year. How's that working out for you guys? Oh, Mark Teixeira. Yeah. Masahiro Tanaka. Um, group lefty. Yeah. Group uh, F for, oh man, Argentina. For fun. Yeah. Argentina went through blazingly. Nigeria went through. Uh, which was their good news from the tournament. Nigeria <laughs> went through to the group stage. But guess what? They won't be going through anywhere anytime soon yeah, because they have now been banned by FIFA. Because FIFA had, you know, they are a little iffy on who they banned, so they decided to ban an entire country. Well, I mean, we'll the problem that. was, you know, they took illegal bribes and didn't pay off FIFA. Yeah, that's, that's your problem. That's the mistake they made. That's your problem. Didn't pay off You're going to cheat, you got to pay off FIFA. Mm -hmm. Also want to talk in that group, the two teams that didn't make it, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Got to look out for Herzegovina. First time in the tournament. Yeah, those Bosnians need to pick up their weight. I think they did a good job, though. Absolutely. Uh, really could have draw, drawn Argentina, mm -hmm. except for some magisterial messy magic. Uh, and then really beat Iran. The really could have drawn against Iran. Nigeria. Really could have gone through. Really could have. Uh, I, I thought they were. They didn't. Iran, also a good tournament. Uh, almost drew Argentina, except again. Didn't blow anyone up. Yeah. Always a good thing. Always a good thing. Uh, group G, the group of death, group uh, which I believe... I believe you had a, a prediction at the beginning yeah. of this World Cup That's right. about about this group, and you said uh, you said the United States would finish last in this group. I did not care for the Americans. You did not. You did not believe in the USMNT. I did not believe of USMNT. I felt uh, leaving Landon at home was uh, bad karma. That's mm. well, it's, it's good to see at the end of the day that uh, Klinsman helped Germany win it all. Oh, he did. He did there help. You uh, and again, moral victory: uh, Germany, United States, Portugal, Ghana was Group G. Moral victory for the United States. They only lost to the World Cup champions 1-0. Them, Argentina, same level. Sure. No sleep till Moscow. Um, Moscow. 
Uh, Portugal also uh, helped the United States go through a little bit in the win that was a the loss. Cristiano that was a Ronaldo, now the most the greatest American, American ever. Ever in the history of the world. Uh, he's going to be the next Expendables, I believe. Better than George Washington, better than Johnny Appleseed himself. Mm -hmm. That was really good Chris, stuff. Chris Ronaldo. Finally, Group H, uh, Belgium with Marwin Blaney. And Got his haircut. Did he? Haven't seen that, have you? I have not seen Got that. Got the haircut. No longer can you pick Fellaini out of any game just based on his massive afro. Got the haircut. Uh, the Belgian team announced to the world a, uh, a great young group of stars mm -hmm. who obviously cannot play together as a team. First major tournament. Uh, also, it should be uh, said, <laughs> uh, Belgium, in, they played five matches in this World Cup, never scored before the 70th minute in any of them. Uh, well, their best player, Eden Hazard, mm -hmm. had really a, a dreadful tournament. Mm -hmm. But that said, they are young. They are uh, extremely talented. Mm -hmm. And, uh, folks, all I can say, Euro 2016 be may fun. be better than the World Cup. It's going to be fun. Because it is going to be a little more uh, tightly packed. Tight. You're not going to have to worry about these horrible Asian teams like the yep. Japanese anymore. Yep. Yep. Or, uh, or any of the, uh, any of the um, yep. African teams. Yep. Or, or Brazil giving up a dozen goals to yep. anyone. It is just going to be the best yep. of Europe and England playing mm. in France to try to bring home Euro 2016. I'm already excited. I'm already counting down. you got to qualify first. Remember that. Oh, we should qualify. we got San Marino and Liechtenstein, I think. Uh, didn't, didn't one of those give you trouble last time, though? No, that was uh, Faroe Islands. Oh, excuse me. Actually, I can't. I don't know. If that's that was Monaco. Problem. They gave you guys problems. No, Monaco is part of France. Oh. Not for qualif World Cup qualifying, I believe. Yeah, that's... um. Um, Who am I thinking of? Macedonia? Who am I thinking of Macedonia? Anyway, uh, to the round of 16, uh, the game that first really brought us the tears. Really, really brought us the tears. Uh, Brazil won, Chile won, Brazil won 3-2 on penalties. Uh, Julio Cesar, he's not good enough for QPR, but he's good enough for Toronto FC. Uh, and he's also good enough for Brazil for one match. Of course, you did hear uh, Sergio Romero, the keeper for Argentina. Yeah. The backup keeper yeah. for Monaco. Monaco. Yeah. Yeah. And that Monaco is in uh, France. Yeah. They yeah. play in the French league. That's an actual They play in that French league. France. France. La Ligue. Ligue. Yeah, I mean, the only people from Monaco, I mean, all they do is, you know, play backgammon and oh, backerack. Back and, right. <laughs> yeah, their game is sort of beat. You know, James, and James Bond goes there to drive sports cars. And Bond, Canada. Blackjack, Baccarat, and Bacardi. There you go. I mean, um, that's Monaco in a, in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. Colombia, Uruguay, are uh, more... James Rodriguez, uh, Uruguay, a little, a little toothless, you could say. Man, how did we get through the group stages and not mention the fact that Suarez tried to take? <laughs> <the ball? laughs> sir, sir, <laughs> sir, put that back. Put that back. Um, folks, I can now talk junk about Luis Suarez. He is no longer one of my beloved Liverpool no, players. Seventy-five anymore. million pounds later, he is Barcelona's problem. You know what's fun now? I can actually pull for Liverpool now. Oh, I'm so happy you're back in the fold. I'm not, they're my second team now. Just Yay. Tottenham, Liverpool. Yay. I still don't like Tottenham. Anyway, um, Suarez, of course, takes a bite out of Giorgio Chiellini, Chiellini. near the end of uh, their group match at the last uh, the last day of group games. A little out there, Tay. Um, distracted the Italians just enough that Uruguay scored a goal, went through, yeah. and then... Um, Probably had himself banned from all football competition for four months. Yeah. Now, competition is just one thing. He literally cannot be unveiled yeah. by Barcelona yeah. at this point for four months. They yeah. cannot even uh, they cannot have the unveiling ceremony where he stands there with his uh, Suarez number mm -hmm. seven uh, La Blagrana mm -hmm. jersey until four months from now because he can't come into a stadium. He can't have any Practice. contact with the football yeah. team. Nothing. Yeah. So. Uh, for Suarez, I, ho I hope you uh, was tasty and it was well worth it. You know, we talked a little bit about this on the podcast. I asked you initially when uh, we were thinking about it, uh, how would Suarez, Messi, and Neymar all play together on uh, Barcelona? And you, so of course, said go 4-4-3 four, 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 or 4-3-3, three, sorry. 4-3-3, yep. Yeah, and uh, play Suarez, Suarez in, the in the middle and play Messi and Neymar on the wings. Well, now... <laughs> Barca might be starting the season without two of those guys. Well, the problem is one is completely suspended. The yeah. other has a broken back. Yeah, which we'll talk about in the next round. So, though. you know. Hey. Um, but that said, man, when they get healthy and unsuspended from yeah. life, just wait. Uh, could, so be, could be sick. So that's that. Uh, France 2, Nigeria 0. Uh, France 
had a, had a bit of a fight from Nigeria, but uh, just couldn't get it through. Uh, Germany to Algeria won in extra time. All three goals coming in extra time. The, the post 30 minutes after the 90, mm -hmm. when it was scoreless, uh, I believe Ozil put in the goal that made it 2-0. That's right. Uh, that thought it would seal the deal. And then Algeria came back right away, put in one, had a chance at the end. To That's equalize. where I really thought I saw the cracks in Germany. I was feeling really good about my France beating Germany pick in the quarterfinals. I thought I did too. Didn't work out. No. Uh, Dutch to Mexico won. Uh, where as long as we're talking about suspensions, uh, the, that match ended uh, on a penalty, uh, which RN Robin drew uh, to put Netherlands up to one. Mexico is actually leading that till about the 84th minute, one nil. And uh, Huntelaar put it, or no, I'm sorry, no Schneider. Schneider. Schneider put in the Schneider, howitzer. Um, equalized, and then yeah. Huntelaar with the penalty put in the penalty yeah. that Robin. Drew. Um, so and later admit, admitted that he cheated. He didn't. He didn't admit to that one being a dive. <laughs> he admitted to diving earlier in the game, which, as we know, a lot of people out there, if you don't like the soccer, you you don't like the players diving much like they did in basketball for a long time. So. And basically, if you don't like Duke basketball, mm -hmm. you know the soccer bothers you at times. Uh, um, Shane Betty would be a fantastic oh, great. Uh, central uh, midfielder. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, he was not, and uh, that's why you also see him right now, right here. Flying through the air. That's that's actually his uh, his foul face. It is the foul face. He he spreads his arms wide, and he goes. Uh. You know, folks, if you're fans of the show, the league, Robin, a uh, very much the doppelganger for Dr. Andre Nozick. I don't even know who. I don't even watch the league. I know exactly who you're talking. I believe that's Paul Shearer. I believe so. I believe that's his name. name. Uh, also, Costa Rica won. Greece won. Costa Rica advances on penalties five three. Mm. Concacaf mm. Thunder. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I really woke up for that one. Uh, that was not much fun to watch. Uh, Argentina won Switzerland nil in extra time. Uh, another game that went in extra time. Argentina wins That's right. at the death. The, Ar the Argentines really made a uh, they made a statement of one nil games. Yeah, in this they made a concerted game. effort not to score too early. Uh, that's exactly right. I mean, they only had the best player in the world, mm. and they made a concerted effort. Let's not score. They didn't just have him. They had Sergio Aguero. They had Aguero. They had Higuain. They had, had a fantastic Di on paper. Yeah. Di Maria. Um, on paper, just a fantastic strike force, um, but really a stingy defense made it up for Argentina. And hey, we only need one, and we'll shut everybody else out. You know, I, I actually looked it up here. Higuain, uh, Spanish for Wondolowski, mm. which now we're going to talk about a little bit. Belgium two, United States one in extra time. Like the Germany Algeria game, all three goals scored in extra time. Um, also, the United States gave up two in the first uh, 15 minutes of extra time. Uh, both basically brought on by super sub Romelé Lukaku. And then the future flashed. Julian Green. How good is Julian Green going to be? Oh, we really don't know because that's literally one the first touch time in the World Cup. One touch in the World Cup. Goal. Uh, Yedlin, the uh, right back, has suddenly become hot property in Europe. DeAndre Yedlin, uh, looking really, Young really good. Youth, youth for the United States. It's Honestly, Yedlin is about to It's about youth. Youth. It's John about Brooks. You. It's about youth. It's John Brooks. It's John, John Brooks. Brooks. Chicago, Germany. Um, unfortunately, Been to Chicago two times in life. <laughs> Clint Dempsey had a chance to equalize, but a great save by the Belgium keeper pre prevented that from going in. Uh, I think if the United States had gone through there, wouldn't have been totally deserved. Given how they played, I mean, basically, it wouldn't have been the United States going through. It would have been Tim Howard going through with maybe and, the performance and, and of the tournament. And in that match, folks, maybe the maybe two of the three best goalkeepers in the entire tournament. Of course, Manuel Neuer uh, winning the golden the golden gloves. Not those, those mm -hmm. after today. Mm -hmm. But when you look at uh, Tim Howard and Thibaut Courtois, oh. oh man, those I mean, those guys. You know, yes, you've heard Tim Howard, Thibaut Courtois. Uh, if you kept up with the Champions League this year. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Atletico Madrid's uh, on loan from Chelsea keeper. Amazing. He's amazing. Uh, about to hit of the Premier League. And if you were also Premier League, Tim Howard. Still be playing forever. That's right. And forever. hopefully, maybe Tim Never. Howard. Maybe Tim Howard. He's, hey, Amen. You, you can last a really long time as a keeper. Just ask uh, his grandfather, Brad Friedel. Oh, he still Friedel. plays for Tottenham. Quarterfinals. Hey, he'll play our Europa matches. Uh, in Jul on July 4th, we had two matches, uh, Brazil 2, Colombia 1, uh, the final match for James Rodriguez, who still scored, scored in every match he played in this year. Won the golden boot. Breakout star of the tournament, uh, Brazil went through with two uh, goals from their defensive players, David Luiz and Thiago Silva. 
Uh, we can't have the discussion about Tiago Silva <laughs> <laughs> we have on the podcast. I have very strong feelings about Tiago Silva. Yes, you do. Yeah, we should say, you think he's one of the great players. <laughs> oh, I think, I think he's the best central defender in the world. Yes. And that's how we're going to leave it. That's how we're going to leave it. special look. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. Also, in a game that... Uh, you describe as a little match fixie from France. Oh, I don't believe Germany oh. won France nil. I, th I think there were a lot of hmm, a lot of things that you're gonna have to a pick up on the podcast for this because bit. I do have uh, opinions on this that involve um, women, women of the night. Um, I, I just <laughs> I believe there were a lot of debts somewhere wiped out for French yeah. gamblers. A Lannister always pays um, his debts because uh, this was not the France no. that had come through. This was. This was the France of 2010 that showed up for this game. They didn't care. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but when you're France and you're playing Germany, who has invaded you and made you surrender numerous amounts of time. That we can't talk about. And when you finally get onto a field of play where their artillery and air superiority does not matter against you, and you still give up, I mean, yes, it is the French way. Uh, no more, not in the face. But uh, I just I, I have problems with it. I have fundamental problems with that game. That was that was literally one of the most boring games between two big time teams. Thought it, we school. thought it might be. We went into this day thinking it was gonna be a great day. Oh yeah. We had what could have been maybe. I asked you actually, did you think Brazil Colombia winner of that would win the World Cup? And you actually said yes. Well, other than I had Argentina win, I thought the winner would get to the final. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, I, that's what I asked you. Brazil. I had the winner get to the final. Yes, which didn't happen. Uh, and then we had July 5th, uh, Netherlands nil, Costa Rica nil. Netherlands went through 4-3 on penalties. Costa Rica, for the second straight match, had gone to penalties. Mm -hmm. Could not after uh, Tim Cruel, Cruel Summer, came in uh, for Netherlands. The keeper, mm -hmm. he replaced his... Uh, uh, who's, yeah, who's yeah, the young guy. Yeah, that guy. Um, came in right at the end of extra time, at the end of the 120 minutes. Uh, Louis van Gaal uh, put him in for the Dutch, yeah. and uh, he saved two key penalty penalties mm -hmm. against Costa Rica and put sure. the Dutch through. Uh, finally, in the quarterfinals, Argentina won Belgium nil. Argentina scored e early on a Di Maria strike, mm -hmm. um, and that was basically it. And, and, and really, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I, you know, I was really spending these quarterfinals to blow our socks off. Mm. It was really disappointing. Did. Yeah. Just really, and really late into this tournament, this is, it really got a little disappointing. This was a really fun tournament that just, I think everybody's legs just gave out about the quarterfinals. Yeah. Even though I think today's game was really good, yeah. it was really it was uh, it was like it was like watching a no hitter. Yeah, well, it, it was like watch, it was it was exactly like watching an eleven inning pitcher's duel. Yeah, if you like it, you loved it. If you wanted to see I, Cliff Lee versus Clayton Kershaw, yeah, but if you wanted to see uh, Barry Bonds hitting, this yeah. wasn't your day. Yeah. Uh, semifinals, uh, Germany not won. Not to say the Germans are not yeah. roided yeah. up, but still. Yeah. Say, uh, semifinals, Brazil won, Germany 7. Now that's the one if you want to see Barry Bonds taking batting practice. That's your match. Because um, the Argent, uh, excuse me, not the Argentinians, the Brazilians look like uh, one of those juice ball era yeah. number five starters. I think we could have gone out there and started and, and scored on, a goal. Taking on the 99 Yankees here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I thoroughly believe I could have had at least one open shot on goal uh, because I'm not QPR level, so Cesar may have saved mine, mm -hmm. but uh, I could have easily made David Luiz stand there and watch me take it. Yeah, Not a good tournament and for Brazil. Uh, also, in the semifinals, Netherlands nil, Argentina nil. Argentina went through 4-2 on penalties. Another penalty shootout, another nil-nil game. Argentina, I believe they, they didn't – Argentina didn't score since the eighth minute – of the uh, their uh, quarterfinal match, they went over two hundred some minutes without scoring a goal. Somehow made it to the finals, and we're literally two minutes away from going to PKs to win the whole tournament. Uh, and again, so today's final, uh, Germany won Argentina. Oh, look, don't no. forget that big time display we saw in the third place. That's true. Third place yesterday, uh, Netherlands three, Brazil nil. Brazil goes out not with a bang but with a whimper. Uh, the host country. We thought they were quitting themselves well. We thought they were gonna they were gonna make it to the finals with duct tape and spit and grit and determination, and then Thiago Silva got suspended. <laughs> we remembered it's Brazil and yeah. spit, grit, and determination are not really in yeah. their football in their football dialogue. No, uh, Neymar was injured for the last two matches, as we right. spoke about uh, after being assaulted by the Colombian, uh, who, who, as we mentioned, was not suspended either. No, not at no. all. Really, really bothersome to me. Remember, biting, not okay. Diving and ramming into players with your knee while they're diving, in the air. Diving and assault, perfectly That's acceptable. That's cool. That is cool. Um, 
Yeah, I will say one thing about the Dutch. Uh, one positive thing about the Dutch because you know I hate the Dutch. Yeah. There's another way to put it. Our loyal that. listeners. I despise the Dutch. Mm-hmm. Um, I did think it was really cool at the end because when Cruel had come in mm-hmm. to uh, take the penalty shootout, uh, the very last couple minutes of the match, Van Hall put in his third string goalkeeper. Yep. Mm-hmm. So literally every player on the Dutch squad played in the World Cup yep. at some point, mm-hmm. which I thought was really cool because when you have a 23-man squad, usually that does not happen in the World three Cup. Three players didn't play for the U.S. Exactly, three didn't play for the U.S. And, and most of the time it's the backup keeper, mm-hmm. you know, because, I mean, hey, you're not taking Tim Howard out. <laughs> but uh, Van Hall, uh, all, all 23 of his guys got in. I just thought that was kind of cool. That said, wish uh, – uh, Robin Van Persie had broken his leg. Yep. Uh, you're, you're not the only one. We have, we have another GFOP that wished that too. Um, Golden Boot Award went to James Rod- James Rodriguez. James. James. Don't call him Jimmy. James. Uh, he win, wins the Golden Boot for most goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, well deserved. Uh, had the most and just and he just made it to the quarterfinals. Scored in every match. Very good. It's going to be fun to watch. Golden Glove went to Manuel Neuer. Especially Neuer, when he goes to Madrid, right? Mm. Best young player went to Paul Pogba again. Uh, the Golden Ball, which is basically the MVP of the tournament, went to Messi. Let's call it. We said earlier, who else is going to give it to? Yeah, I guess. I, I really think uh, I think Mueller could have had a good chance to give it today, mm-hmm. but Mueller was really, really absent from today's game. Yeah. At least Messi did play a part in the match today. Um, but you know, the one thing about Germany, Germany's got so many guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have so many good guys they can beat you. I mean, you know, uh, their injuries today. Sammy Kadira, who could walk into just about any side in the world. Uh, pull, hurt his calf in the, before the match. Mm-hmm. Um, Yuri Lowe goes to a guy who no one's ever heard of to replace <laughs> him. That guy gets hurt. Oh, we'll just bring in Andre Sherla, who's, you know, one of the best young midfielders in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he, I believe, had the assist to win it. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, just some other awards. Uh, Paul Bogba won the award for best young player again. Also on the short list, though, another Frenchman, Raphael Varane. And uh, Memphis Depay for the Dutch. Depay's going to be good. Memphis reigns. It's going to be really good. Uh, also on the short list for the Golden Glove Award, Kaylor Navas and Sergio Romero. Um, no Tim Howard, even though he... Well, and gold, I believe Golden Glove comes from a uh, number yeah. of goals yeah. given up. Mm-hmm. So, you know... Um, Gave up a few too many, but probably had more saves than just about anybody in the tournament. Exactly. In one match. Well, like we said the cool thing about Romero, he's the backup <laughs> keeper for his own club yeah. team, uh, which it has never been a great club team, so... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just one of those things. And don't forget the Fair Play Award. Yep, Fair Play Award goes to Colombia. Which, remember, even though you can injure somebody by assault and knock him out of the rest of the World Cup and change the fortunes of the host nation, you can still win the Fair Play Award. Just That's remember, FIFA. Just remember how fair it was the last time they were there when they came out of the tournament and drug lords killed their own great defensive player because of an own goal that cost them betting money. 30 for 30 made a documentary about it. Go read Richard it. Richard Sarmiento, I love Colombia. You are my favorite non-American British country. Um, they have not yet made a uh, award for the uh, like the All Star team. They have not yet announced the best, the best 11. eleven. Not according to uh, this. Will so. Zlatan be there? <laughs> Zlatan. Then it is not uh, a well, it is not a best eleven if Zlatan cannot be there. Do you want to tell the people at home who Zlatan is so they know? Zlatan Ibrahimovic, <laughs> finest player in the world. He is the uh, Swedish talisman. Uh, um, he will openly tell you he's the greatest player in the world. <laughs> and he usually backs it up when he plays. The problem is the rest of Sweden was true crap this year. Um, so still almost made it. They almost, still almost made it. Yeah, you can't blame Zlatan for anything. <laughs> Why would you? Which he will tell you you cannot blame Zlatan for anything. <laughs> I mean anything. Oh, it's Zlatan. Zlatan's amazing. <laughs> it's a, it's a wonderful nose. Folks, check out your French League this year. PSG, Paris Saint-Germain. Tell you what, don't worry with the French League. Just watch him in the Champions League. He is so Zlatan, it is not funny. Oh, I love Zlatan. And if you want to uh, hear more about him, go to uh, Fitpa Hatpa. Is that their name? The YouTubers? I don't really know what they were <laughs> um, if, you want to, if you want to see more of their great videos, uh, you actually posted on our Facebook page. Uh, if you want to get ready for the Premier League, which is coming up here in less than a month. And watch uh, how Arsene Wenger tries to sign players. <laughs> Um, What's well, football balls? balls. <laughs> it's great. Really give a shout out to those guys. Um, Wes, I think that's about it. We gotta we gotta say bienvenue and obrigado well, to well, the World well, Cup. No, uh, that's right. Bienvenue, obrigado, um, sayonara, um, hasta la vista, baby, to the World Cup. Domo. Um, see you later. Happy yeah. trails, as we yeah. say in America. Oh. All you Americans say. Um, that will that will conclude the All Sports Show's 2014 World Cup coverage. Mm-hmm.
And on that, I just heard a lot of televisions just suddenly flip back Hi. to us. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Yeah. Um, before we do go, we are, oh, we're over a little bit of time, but everyone loves us, so who it's cares? Um, we're in extra time. Yes, we're in extra time, folks, just like the World Cup. We're trying to score. Let's see, we're back in the World Cup. Um, <laughs> no comment. Um, we do want to give you a quick preview of what's coming yes. up in the month of August mm-hmm. as season three of the All New Sports Show kicks off. Uh, football previews begin August the 3rd. Uh-huh. Uh, they will run the 3rd, the 10th, and the 17th. Uh-huh. And then the week after that, football starts. Yeah, 22nd, opening games. It's going to be a lot of fun. School football starts, folks. And, uh, of course, we will be doing uh, a Friday game of the week. Of course. As we, uh, as we have done now for quite a while here on WHIG TV. Uh-huh. And, of course, every Sunday night during football season, we come to you live with uh, your one-stop for everything, Nash, Edgecombe, Wilson mm-hmm. County, to wrap everything up each and every week, mm-hmm. come right here. Join us every Sunday night at 8 o'clock on WHIG TV. Mm-hmm. We'll talk everyone from Rocky Mount, uh, Rocky Mount Academy, Wilson Hunt, Fike, Bettingfield, Tarboro, North Edgecombe, Rocky Mount Prep, whoever you want to talk about out of those 12, of course. Mm-hmm. We will talk about them each and every week. We'll, we'll of course, have, bring guests. That's right. We'll have our guests. Um, don't worry, folks. 60 seconds of soccer will stay in your life. So we're going to keep you up to date every week on what's going on in the Premier League. And maybe Zlatan. Who knows? Zlatan deserves his own time. Zlatan deserves his own time. Because um, nothing is Zlatan's fault. God, I love Zlatan. God, it's such a great name. We might have to bring him on as a correspondent. I would love to. Anyway. Um, but that's what's coming up. And we do have a big announcement uh, for not only the yeah. show here, but also the podcast. Yeah. We're, we're going to give you a little highlight. You've got to tune in August the 3rd. He will make his debut here on the show. Yeah. He is our new producer for the show. Yeah. Uh, producer Dez. I don't really know anything else about him. I, I, don't re- I don't really take a lot of uh, interest in uh, new people that aren't me. Um, so, you know, therefore, Ed will tell you a little bit about him, folks. But uh, he will be on uh, producing our podcast, producing our show. Running now, our Facebook feed. he talks directly to us. He does not like to talk on camera mm-hmm. or on tape at all. Yeah. So you'll never probably actually hear him. Um, but, you know, if he does have a thought to drop in every once in a while, he'll tell us if I think it's important. Mm-hmm. We'll drop it in. Yeah. So um, you know, definitely look forward to that. And give us a little bit about him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, from, uh, he's a big, big Cleveland fan. Big Cleveland he fan. had a big week. He had a big week with the LeBron. Week. LeBron's back for him. Yeah. Uh, big fan of. I believe he's from um, Illinois. Yes. But a Cleveland fan. So he is a Cleveland fan. Illinois also enjoys the Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm gonna have some fun with old yeah. days there. Yeah, we know how you feel so, about the Ohio State. Yeah. Okay. Other than Jeff Craddock, that's about all I think <laughs> they've ever produced out of that state of Ohio. We still gave him the job, and uh, he's gonna be running that. That's he's right. gonna be running our Facebook it's feed, the only one who would our Twitter feed, paying. and uh, so from now on, uh, once he comes in, uh, right. if when you guys look at our Facebook posts. Mm-hmm. Unless it's us signing them at the That's end, right. It'll be it's producer right. does. And I believe uh, he starts August 1st doing everything. Yes, because that'll be Friday night. Fantastic. Friday night, and uh, we'll go ahead and break him in and mm-hmm. be a lot get of fun. him ready to rock he's, he's, got, I've, he's got a lot of good ideas for the show, so it's going to be fun. Know, if you call them good, I just call them ideas, but everybody has ideas. They're kind of like a except Arge- anatomy. Except Argentina today. Yeah, Argentina, Argentina, Argentina is slightly no lacking in ideas today. We're slightly lacking. Oh, World let's Cup. try to give it to Messi. Nothing works. Yeah. Um... Coming up on August 3rd, once again, we are going to be running that day. It looks like Rocky Mount Academy, mm-hmm. Tarboro, Southwest Edgecombe, and North Edgecombe. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back with a Brian Goodwin update at that point. Also, take a look at what Hobbs Johnson's doing. Real quick, uh, something we did not get to talk about, Benton Moss was drafted this mm-hmm. summer by the San Francisco Giants. Decided to go back to school. Of course, he's a Moorhead Scholar yes. guy. And uh, Benton's going to go back, finish his education, have one more year on the mound for the Tar Heels. And we'll see what he can do. I believe, of course, he should have a great spring coming yeah. up. Uh, maybe the number one, number two again on that Tar Heel staff. Maybe he'll get some offensive support this year. Hey, you never know. We all can wish, can't yeah. we? Um, so congratulations to Ben. Congratulations yeah. on his decision to uh, stick around and go to college one more year. Um, all you rising seniors at home who are watching our show, hey, it's your chance to get talked about here on the All New Sports Show. Come out each and every Friday night, perform. And we are going to give we will you interview so you. much shout out love. Yes. It'll be crazy, of course. You could be the next side Murphy. <laughs> I'm setting the bar high. That is a, that is a high bar set. Um, wow. Mm, that just that, okay. that, that got me going. I, uh. I, oh, just thinking about Saeed Murphy, just, it gets me ready for football. Yeah. And, folks, we stick around. Uh, just in a couple of weeks, we will be bringing you high school football. Mm-hmm. A little more of this soccer that Ed likes to talk about.
West too, for that fact. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just me. It's just, it's just me. me. All right. Well, Ed, I think we've gone ten minutes past time tonight. Uh, the official is looking at his watch. He's Three about whistles. ready to blow his whistle. Whistle, whistle, whistle. Us raising our cup. Raise the cup. I'm raising Frosty. I'm raising Santa. Yay, folks. Greg Green. Yep. For my man Lee in there flipping the controls that got you that one awesome commercial break tonight. <laughs> I'm Wes Bradshaw. We will see you. Well, we're going to have a show next week. Yeah. Obviously, we'll have some baseball back yeah. for you again. Mm -hmm. One more week of baseball. Check out some Wilson Thompson baseball. Two weeks. So a couple more weeks of baseball, and mm -hmm. then we go all football all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm Wes Bradshaw. We'll see you guys later on the All New Sports Show, brought to each and every week by Roger G. Show and Associates here on WHIG TV. Good night, America. Listen to our podcast. And what's left of England? Oh, I love. It. Oh no! Oh no! Pins everywhere. That was a Rooney shot. Oh. It went over the bar. Oh. love you, Wes. War pig. Love you, Wilmots. Oh. Wonder strike. When, when, when is Mike Hellbeck in Wonder strike? It's Roy. Ah. Uh, Stanislav is Good night, Slatan. Good night.